Good morning. Good morning. On this Easter Sunday, its traditional greeting is Christ has risen, he has risen indeed. Welcome to our service. This is the, the high point of our Christian year. Without Easter Sunday, there would be no Christian faith at all. So we gather to worship God together and we, we sing a hymn of the resurrection, Jesus Christ is risen today. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. We can rejoice today and be full of confidence because Christ has been raised from the dead and now lives and reigns in triumph. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we gather here this day to offer you our worship and praise, to greet again our risen Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. With countless people around our world today, we honour you. We glorify your name. We praise our risen Saviour. We thank you, Lord, that, that Jesus rose again from the dead, that we do not serve or follow a dead leader, but that we worship and serve a risen Lord, someone who has died for our sins, who has cleansed us from all unrighteousness, 
who is a living Lord and Saviour. So we praise you on this holy day, on this high day of rejoicing, this day when people around our world rejoice in a risen Saviour. And so we do here in this place, as countless numbers have done before us. But Lord, always as we gather in your presence, we are conscious of our own failures. We confess that we often live under a dark cloud. We admit that we are not strangers to sin ourselves, the sin that nailed Christ to the cross. Like the Pharisees, we have been self-righteous and resentful of criticism. Like Pilate, we have been unjust and evaded our duty. Like the disciples, we can sometimes be disloyal. But now, trusting in your love and in your unwearied patience, Lord, we again seek your forgiving love. Assure us this day that you can and you will forgive all who turn to you in repentance and faith. And so, Lord, be pleased to meet with us here this day. Speak to us again words of life, words of eternal life. And so hear us as we further pray now in the words that Jesus has taught us to say, words that are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. Has anyone had an Easter egg hunt yet this morning? Yes, you have. Where did you have it? In the garden. Great. Um, it's great having an Easter egg hunt, isn't it? Um, at the end of the service, by the way, there are Easter eggs out there in the hall that you're, you're going to... Just small ones, but you're free to get them at the end of the service, so just remember that. Um, some people are better at looking for things than other people. Do you remember when you were young and your granny or your granddad said, where did I leave my... And they couldn't find them. And you had to say, Gran, they're over there or they're on your head, <laughs> your glasses. They're on your head, Grant. So some people are better at looking for things than other people. Now, when, when I was young um, and got an Easter egg, I, the thing that, that I used to really enjoy doing was breaking the egg open to find out what was inside it. And it was always difficult to break open. <laughs> Just to show that it's, this is live, it's not <laughs> pre-recorded. Nowadays, you open eggs and there's nothing in them, is that right? Can you assure me of that? that there is nothing inside eggs now. In my days, in my young days, you opened an egg and there was always something inside of it. Yeah. But it's empty. You don't buy eggs like that. No, we couldn't get eggs like that now, do we? Um, so you don't get that surprise of finding what's inside your egg. Now, 
Do you recognise this character on the screen? Well, for, for the sake of the older people, you want to tell them who it is. What's his name? Wally. This, sorry, I know they were looking at you, but it's on the screen. <laughs> Now, for those who don't know, Wally is, um, this, is, this character Wally um, is a character that um, you, you get in a book and it's called Where's Wally? And there's all kinds of um, pictures, crowd scenes, and you have to try and find out where Wally is in this uh, crowd scene. Um, now, before we put the crowd scene up, and many years ago, we were going to France on holiday and we stopped off in Kent uh, for a couple of days and we, we went to Hern Bay. Have you ever been to Hern Bay in Kent? And we were walking along the promenade at Hern Bay and Wally walked past us. And then Wally cycled past us. And then we saw Wally buying ice cream at an ice cream shop. And then we saw Wally on the beach. In fact, there were at least 50 or 60 Wallys walking around the front at Heron Bay. There was obviously some, some convention of Wally. And there were just folk everywhere dressed as Wally uh, walking around and generally just mingling with the crowd. So you didn't have any problem finding them. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Um, let's see the picture. This is the kind of picture you get where you've got to try and find where Wally is. Well, let me tell you something before you turn your eyes. I've looked and I can't find them <laughs> in the picture <laughs> because I don't think he's there. I don't think he's there. And not finding something is what Easter was all about because they didn't find the body of Jesus. And like the egg, the tomb was empty. So it's what you don't find that makes Easter so special and so important to us in our faith. Now we're going to have a little drama here. It's a domestic drama. It could have happened on Easter Sunday. I don't know if it did, but it might have just happened on Easter Sunday. You. Well, I thought it was the right thing to do in the circumstances. The right thing to do? The right thing to do? To give away our family tomb to what's his name from Nazareth? His name's Jesus. Oh, I don't care what his name is. What I do care about is that you have given away our family tomb to a complete stranger without telling me. Well, I'm telling you now, am I not? Well, it's a bit late now, isn't but it? There wasn't any time before. Oh, you could have made the time. What was I supposed to do? Bring the body back here and say, what about giving this chap a place in our family tomb? Look, I just don't understand why you had to get involved in the first place. Because he needed a tomb. We need a tomb. Not as much as he does. Well, how come? Because he's dead. Oh. Well, we'll be dead one day. 
And what will we do then? <laughs> Not a lot, I think. You just can't take this seriously, can you? Honestly. Sometimes I wonder why I ever married you, Joseph of Arruthia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I upset you. We can always get another tomb. But that one was special. Aye, I know it meant a lot to you. And it should have meant a lot to you too. After all, it was a wedding present. <laughs> Only your mother could give someone a tomb as a wedding present. Don't you talk about my mother in that tone of voice. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was very thoughtful. Well, I'm sure it was. I just didn't know what to say when she took it out, us out to see it. Oh, just what we've always wanted. Or I can't wait to try it out. Well, anything would have been better than what you did say to her. Oh, well, let's not go over that again. You said, feel free to use it whenever you want. <laughs> Look, all I meant was... Oh, I know what you meant. You never have liked my family, have you? You know, there's plenty of room left in the tomb. You are not seriously suggesting that we can still use it. Don't see why not. Over my dead body. Aye. That man was a common criminal. He wasn't he. He was. He was executed, don't you know? They were trumped up charges. Oh, so you're one of his followers now, are you? No, but I just found what he said was really interesting. Interesting? I was really quite intriguing. Oh my goodness, the man was off his head. No, he wasn't. He claimed that he was the Messiah. Oh my goodness, if there aren't delusions of grandeur, then I don't know what is. Perhaps he was the Messiah. Then why couldn't he afford his own tomb? I don't know, but... Oh, yes? I'm looking for Mr. and Mrs. Joseph of Arimathea. Yes. Oh, I'm the gardener. I, I'm the Gethsemane Garden Maintenance. We take care of the plot outside your tomb. And I'm afraid your account is overdue. Oh, typical. Typical! Full of overblown gestures, but far too busy to pay your own bills. I'll oh. write you a cheque, Jimmy. Oh, we won't actually be needing, needing your services anymore anyway. Are you not happy with us? Oh, no, I'm quite satisfied with you. It's my husband I'm not satisfied with. He's only gone and given away our tomb to a complete stranger, you know. There you are. Oh, so very much. Uh, and so, what would you do? Well, I'd ask for it back, I suppose. Well, it's a little bit late for that, seeing as he's already dead. So, where is he now, then? What do you mean, where is he now? He's in our tomb. In your tomb? Oh, doesn't anybody listen to a word I say? Yes, he's in our tomb. Well, I'm just a bit surprised because I didn't see him this morning. Well, you wouldn't have done, was there that great big rock across the entrance? But there wasn't any rock across the entrance. Oh, yes, there was. Oh, no, there wasn't. Oh, yes, there was. Oh, no, there wasn't. Mm. There wasn't, and as far as I could see, the tomb looked quite empty, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better be on my way. Our tomb is empty again? It must have been grave robbers. Empty? But how could they get past the guards? <gasps> no nasty strangers cluttering it up. He couldn't have let himself out, could he? We'll be free to use it whenever we want. Could he? Our wedding tomb. It had such a lovely view. Thank you. 
And now let's hear what actually happened on uh, that first Easter Sunday with our reading. The scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. That's John 20, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word and to his name be the glory and praise. Thank you, Edna. We sing the hymn, What a Wonderful Saviour is Jesus.
So it's the empty tomb that was the, the high point of, of Easter. It was discovering this empty tomb. Can I have a, an E? Right, here we are, E. E for early. Are you an early person or are you not an early person? Do you get up in the morning ready to get on with the day? I'm not feeling there's many people <laughs> that, are, that are feeling that way at the moment. After coffee. Well, that's not so bad. Um, I used to have to get up early in the morning when I was 13. Uh, when I was 13, I got a paper round. And that meant getting up. And I had to be at the shop for 7 o'clock in the morning to pick up my pile of papers to then either walk or cycle a mile to where I delivered them. And <clears throat> the thing that, <clears throat> that I used to think back in those days was, wow, I'm the first person to get the news that day. Because for the young folk, in those days there was no such thing as internet and there was no such thing as breakfast news on television. So nobody knew what was happening until I put that newspaper through their letterbox. And that's the only way. And I could look at the newspapers and say, oh my goodness, oh, oh, look at that. Isn't it amazing what Dennis the Menace has been up to? <laughs> <laughs> because I also delivered the comics as well. So up early in the morning, out with the news of what was going on. And in our reading, we discover that Mary and some of the other women were up early, six o'clock probably in the morning, to go and check the tomb that Jesus was buried in. Because everything had happened so fast, Jesus had been crucified, he'd been taken down off the cross, Joseph of Arimathea had given him a tomb and he had been buried and he had to be buried very quickly because religious people in those days didn't want um, him to in any way affect their Sabbath, their special day. And so he was buried in a tomb very quickly and a big stone rolled over it. But the women went early in the morning to do because they loved Jesus and because they wanted to do what was right for him. All oh, right, I've got the end. <laughs> I've got the end. So, and the, the woman that, that um, John mentions is Mary, Mary uh, Magdala, Magdalene. She was one of the, the women that had been close to Jesus and she went to the tomb. Now, these ladies were hoping to do what wasn't a particularly pleasant job. Um, like many cultures in our world still to this day, it's the women who have to prepare someone's body after they've died. And they were hoping to be able to take the spices that they had and to to put them uh, in onto Jesus' body to properly uh, see him um, buried. But they were going rather in hope rather than necessarily in knowing what their plan was. Their plan was, if they could, to help bury Jesus properly. But there were guards. There were 
a stone rolled over the tomb. Now, the tombs in those days, the stones weren't big boulders like sometimes you used to see in Sunday school, as if it was a big boulder rolled over the mouth of a cave. Stones were discs that ran on a groove um, and couldn't be opened from the inside. You wouldn't be able to open it from the inside. You'd only be able to open it if you could roll the stone literally like a disc. So the ladies were thinking, could they open it? Would the guards maybe open it for them so that they could complete their job? But no, well, the soldiers, it wouldn't have been worth their job. They could have got into really serious trouble if they had opened that tomb again. So they were going with some kind of expectation, but they didn't really know what their plan was. But when they got there, the stone was already rolled back and the tomb was empty and there were no sign of any soldiers there guarding it. Can I have a pee? And so their first thought when they saw it empty was, we must go and tell Peter. Peter has to know. Remember, Peter had let Jesus down. Peter hadn't been at the cross when Jesus was crucified. He'd even denied knowing Jesus. But their first thought is, we must tell Peter. And so they run off and they, they find Peter and they tell Peter. And Peter and the reading we had didn't name him, but we're pretty sure it was John. They ran to the tomb. They had to find out for themselves. Could it be true? Could it be true? And they went and John arrived there first and he bent down and he looked in the tomb and he could see that Jesus' body wasn't there. And Peter then arrived late. I think he was maybe slightly older than John so he couldn't run as fast. And Peter got there and he immediately went into the tomb. He was like a, a detective arriving at a, at a crime site. He had to find out for himself what had happened. And so Peter goes in and he looks. And what does he see? He sees burial cloths lie, laid out on a stone slab. He sees that there's, there's one cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus and he sees another bit that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, the way he would have been buried. And these cloths are lying there, folded up. Have the tea for tomb. So inside the tomb, here were these clothes, grave clothes, that were folded up neatly. If I went into your bedroom, would it be neat and tidy this morning? You know, teenagers are notorious for having messy bedrooms. Would yours be messy or would it be all nice and tidy? Would everything be in its place? Like these grave clothes? Maybe if you're mum or dad goes into your room and it's all absolutely neat and tidy the reaction is hello 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 what's going on here <laughs> there's something up it's too tidy but it was that very way the clothes were laid out on the gravestone on the the, the slab that made peter think no, something very special has happened here. If the body of Jesus had been stolen, they wouldn't have left the cloths. 
If somebody else had removed the body in order to go and bury it somewhere else, they would still have kept it wrapped up. So the fact that the cloths were there all laid out suggested to them that something very, very special had happened. That something very unique had happened. That it wasn't just that the body had been moved. And then a why? Trying to think, how do we complete it? A why? Yabba dabba do? <laughs> I don't think so. That wasn't their response that morning. Their response was, was contemplative. They thought about it. And they came to the conclusion that yes, yes, he has risen. Because they remembered that Jesus had told them that he would die, but that he would rise again. So they had seen the inside of the tomb. They remembered that Jesus had told them it would happen. And then, of course, later on, they met Jesus himself as he came back to see them and to encourage them and to set them on their journey. So yes, he has risen. And all because the tomb was empty. They couldn't find the body of Jesus. I remember when I was at university studying my theology, I remember somebody asking the question, what would make you doubt your faith? And I remember someone saying, the only thing that would make me doubt my faith is if someone could produce the body of Jesus and say, look, he didn't rise from the dead. Well, 2,000 years later, um, still nobody has produced that body. No one has said, look, here he is. And millions of people have testified to their faith and belief that Jesus has risen from the dead because they've met him in their own lives. They've felt his presence in their hearts. They've known him answering their prayers. They've heard him guiding them on their journey through life. And they've known his companionship in days of difficulty and in weakness. And that's the true measure of what the resurrection of Jesus means for us today. The tomb was empty. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we thank you that we can proclaim that glorious resurrection of Jesus today because the tomb was empty and that we have those early witnesses of John and Peter and Mary uh, telling us what they saw and that the tomb was empty. But then we have that witness of the, the resurrection itself, of Jesus meeting with them a presence that has continued down these 2,000 years and that we here in this building today can also testify to the risen Christ, the power that he has in our lives. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn that's joyful, Easter Tide. Elizabeth's going to play it over because there's just the timing of it, you just so that you get the timing of it, this joyful Easter Tide.
On this Easter Sunday, my thoughts have been going back to um, 2009 uh, when I preached to a congregation in Russia, in uh, the Severosk region of Russia, uh, well over 400 people in the church that Sunday. And a reminder that even in the midst of all the turmoil that is going on, uh, in, with Russia in Ukraine. There are many faithful Christian people in Russia who, like us, are gathering today to remember and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Let's pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, as we have thought of our risen Saviour this day, we do pray, Lord, for your church, the body of Christ that you have entrusted with sharing the good news of the gospel. Lord, we know that there are people all around our world today sharing in that resurrection hope, sharing the good news in their communities, proclaiming our risen Christ. Lord, we pray for your worldwide church. In particular, we remember that church, the church in Russia and in Ukraine, sharing a common faith. There are people that are 
fighting one another, not for faith, but for, for human reasons, for power that is humanly driven. So Lord, we pray for your church in these countries, for the leadership of the people there, Lord, for their comfort and hope and help, even in the midst of these terrible events and the terrible destruction. Lord, have mercy upon your people in these countries. Keep them faithful. Encourage them in a day like today, even in the midst of their woes and destruction. Lord, we pray um, for your church in this land. Lord, for your faithful people, that they will be encouraged. They'll be encouraged in their own faith, in their walk with you, and in their service to others. Bless your church, O oh Lord, in these days, these days of, of difficulties for many, many competing voices that are trying to tell us what to believe, what to do, where to go. But Lord, may we hear your voice through the clamours of all the other voices that are speaking. May we hear and know again our risen Lord. Lord, we pray for all who suffer at this time. We think particularly of those who sorrow without faith or hope. Lord, we thank you for the comforting message of the resurrection. Your beloveds are not here, but they are risen. For the dying, we pray that they may be upheld by Christ's assurance, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, may your faithful people hear that afresh. May we know it deep in our own hearts. Lord, we pray for all who suffer at this time, who feel crucified by disease or wounded as if with a spear by a painful ailment. Lord, draw close to all who, who struggle at this time. Enable them to endure with a courageous faith drawn from Christ himself who suffered to redeem us from our sins. Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray for all who carry that burden of leadership in our land. We pray, Lord, that you will endow them with wisdom, with understanding. Lord, that their decisions will will be the right ones. Their leadership will lead in the right direction. That it will be in harmony with your will and purpose for our nation and for our people. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, also on a day like today, we give you thanks for all your faithful people of all generations, for all who have fought the good fight of faith, for all who have served faithfully, who have proclaimed the gospel, who have lived it out in their lives, and who are now in your nearer presence. Lord, for all your faithful people, we give you thanks that we stand on the shoulder of giants. So Lord, hear our prayers, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We close our service as we sing that great resurrection hymn, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, and the love of God our Heavenly Father be with us all today and forevermore. Amen.